Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Invincible Podcast, probably the best superhero podcast in the universe. This is a show where we talk all things Invincible, including the animated series and the comic book by Robert Kirkman, Corey Walker, and Ryan Otley. I am one of your hosts, Ryan. Joining me today is Bill. Hi, everybody. We've got Wyatt. I'm here. And TJ. Oh, hello. It's the sweet one. Oh, that's a, that oh, a little TJ. A sick sweet one. <laughs> Little baby boo boo goo goo got little baby. How are you guys feeling other than being a little sick? Yeah, me and TJ are both fighting off a cold, it seems like. <laughs> Which I'm glad. I don't know why TJ got all of the attacks from Bill there. I'll appreciate it, I guess, that it was all just directed at TJ. But yeah, I'm good. A little cough here and there, but I should be fine. Season two has broken half the podcast. It has. It has. It's just been so intense. You guys warned me that season one was just this gauntlet, and now here I am. No, well, I'm, I'm fine. Half a season, half the podcast has been taken out. Uh, Bill, it's you and I for the next half. We have to keep yeah. our guard up. Yep. I mean, I was sick two episodes ago. True. So, yeah. yeah. Um, we've got a, a fun episode here planned. We want to talk a little bit about your reactions to episode four. Um, we've got a lot to talk about as far as predictions. We've got a few emails and we want to give some of our own thoughts on where we think part two will go. Um, if you want to email us to be a part of the show. Spoilers. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, it's going to be very spoiler. We'll get into this. Um, but email us at the invincible podcast at gmail.com. You can send us your predictions for the other half of the episode, your thoughts on the, uh, first half, um, and anything else you want to hear. If there's something else you want to hear us talking about, talk about, let us know. Uh, you can find us on YouTube, Spotify, SoundCloud, Facebook, all that good stuff. Um, you can find us over at uh, theinvinciblepodcast.com and TikTok. We have some great uh, breakouts over on TikTok as well. Um, I also want to do a plug right here for uh, some of our past videos and give a little bit of a heads up of what's coming. So we have been doing weekly episodes um, because we've had the show you know, to talk about every week. Uh, but now that we're going back into a little bit of a normal schedule until we find out when season two is, um, as of this recording, we don't know when the rest of season two is coming out. Um, but check out some of our previous videos. We talk about this every now and then, but we did like an awesome trivia show uh, a couple times even. Um, some stuff after San Diego Comic-Con, some game shows, some other fun videos. And those should all be in uh, over on our YouTube page. Um, we've also got some Let's Plays. By the time you hear this, part two for Invincible Friends, Adam Eve should be up. Wyatt, you and Nicole have been playing through that. Yeah, it's been a ton of fun. We only got through one more chapter mm-hmm. in our second part. We, whenever we're recording, we have to arrange a babysitter because we don't want to have Grayson like running in at a moment where there's like a bunch of violence or something like that. Um, so we have to schedule our times maybe a little slower than we'd like to get through all of it. But it's been so much fun. I the game is incredible. The artwork is so fun. Like I know we're going to talk in more depth on a future episode yeah. once we've all made our way through it and all that. Mm-hmm. But I'm loving it so far. The videos are a ton of fun. Just me and Nicole both like doing our best at voices it's as so we funny. read the lines of the characters, which, you know, is what it is. Yep. But yeah, it's been a ton of fun. I am, uh, I think, seven hours in and I am like halfway through the final chapter. That's why I was late to jump on to record. Nice. Uh, I thought I'd have time to finish it, but I'm excited to get to the end of it and for us all to be able to talk about it um yeah uh and then within the next couple weeks not sure when but soon our next video um will be an interview with simon Rasiopa, which we were lucky enough to sit down with and chat with him a couple weeks ago so that was also in the chamber and going to be coming out soon so keep an eye out for that um like bill mentioned we do get into spoilers Um, This is first and foremost a show about the Invincible comic book. Um, We've been doing it for a long time, and then the animated series became a thing. And so um, we obviously cover both, but we don't shy away from talking about what's to come uh, and so on, especially on these episodes where they're not the breakdowns. The breakdowns, we try to be a little bit more, um, you know, cautious about, uh, you know, not giving, you know, too far away spoilers. Um, But in this episode, we're definitely going to be talking about where we think the rest of season two will go knowing the comic so Mm -hmm. spoiler warning um and we'll get into that soon we first have uh some emails and some news and stuff like that so you got a little bit of time but just be warned 
<laughs> All right. It sounded like like I don't like know like a, like one of the one of I the ghosts say, from, when you're yeah. yeah when you're entering a Disneyland ride. No windows, Turn back and no now. doors. <laughs> All right, we've got some Invincible related news. First up, uh, these were released a few days apart or weeks apart or whatever, but uh, the Invincible Twitter account posted the videos of both Seth Rogen and Steven Yun in the recording booth. What'd you guys think of those? Incredible. Like, they're yeah. so good. Like, it, both of them are great. Get Watching Steven Yun and specifically the scenes from episode four that they showed him recording, just like it made me wish we could somehow like make him high school aged for when they do eventually do a live action version, because he's just amazing. Like it reminds you of how great of an actor he is. I think maybe sometimes it's easy to forget that since we're not seeing him while mm -hmm. we're watching the show, but yeah, he's just fantastic. It's, it, it was so cool to see that too. Yeah. I wonder how stupid they feel when they're, I would never be able to, first of all, trying to read anything and record it, and you're and you're like trying to make it like a script is really really hard to do i mean we all have done that on the podcast so the fact that they're able to like do it and emote as much as they do it was very cool and to actually mind, see there's in, in several cases they're doing a voice you know what i mean or trying to keep yeah. it like a certain age or like other things and like what yeah. emotion what headspace is the character in and there's a camera on you and there's like five yeah. different people on zoom watching and listening all right now go yeah, and you're getting direction, like, and you have to listen to it while still trying to be natural. Like, yeah. it's the most unnatural thing that you could be in, and they, I mean, they crush it. Even the oh. Seth Rogen one was like, yeah, he's just, they're fucking good, man. Yeah, man. They're professionals. The, uh, Would love to have them break down that process, you know, on a podcast <laughs> right? like this one, where you take time to break all, all that down, you know? The, uh, like we talked about before, Seth Rogen sounds more Alan than Seth Rogen. So it was really cool seeing him, mm -hmm. you know, do it. But then, yeah, that's Steven Young one, man. It's just chill inducing, like how, yeah. how yeah. much more like raw and angry it is seeing him say those lines. Ugh. Yeah. It, yeah. They picked a good scene to show. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, I think, uh, I think Steven Young, it, like, like you said, like, See, actually seeing him do it is is crazy but seth rogan seeing seth rogan is such seth rogan is such a staple as an actor like everybody knows seth rogan as seth rogan and not saying that steven young isn't a huge actor but steven young was introduced to me as a robert kirkman character yeah. in glenn as the walking dead so sure. it didn't feel jarring to like to, to hear him as it's Mark, almost more jarring to Seth see Rogen. Stephen Young get nominated for an Oscar like he was. You know, right. I mean, that was the right. weird thing for yeah. us. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. but seeing Seth Rogen in there and like obviously being used to his voice as Alan, but actually seeing him voice Alan was like, oh shit, like Invincible is a big deal. Yeah. Like this is a big deal. Yeah. Um, moving on, the we've talked a bunch about it and did a whole deep dive into it on a previous episode, but Guarding the Globe, the Invincible mobile game is available now in the UK. So if you're one of our listeners over in the UK, you can get it now and it's available. Uh, US is still slotted for February as far as I know. So we still have to wait a little bit longer for that. So sad and angry about it. <laughs> <laughs> just think of how much further all of our characters would have been. You know, I know they're just lost, lost to time. They're in, they're in another multiverse, yeah. you know. That's uh, okay. it'll be fun to to start. Over. I am kind of excited to start over because it was yeah. pretty fun. Yeah. And know what you know now yeah. and not have to like the learning curve. Yep. So mm -hmm. I'm still fucking pissed about it. But <laughs> it's all right. Uh, it just shows how good it is. So Invincible, speaking of Invincible in games, Invincible is officially in Fortnite. Well, he was. If you're hearing this, it, the window's already closed. Uh, it was only available for the weekend. Um, and that happened, man. So I know myself and TJ and our friend Matt were in uh, our, were online when the, the shop switched over. Uh, we were actually in there with Chris Wise, listener of the podcast, uh, from the Invincible Podcast podcast. And, and it shut down Fortnite. It, it like broke Fortnite. <laughs> like just the store refreshing. It took so long to download these things and like, you know, wow, go through and purchase and cool. everything. It was chugging, even like you're within your own locker trying to change costumes and everything. Like it was just so slow. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, that just goes to show, I think how many people jumped on in that moment and were buying them up. 
Uh, yeah. And I've seen Especially it for a game like Fortnite that like they're used to a big player base. They're oh, yeah. used to like if any game is going to handle a big influx of people coming to check something out, it's Fortnite. And the fact that even that game was still struggling with how many people were excited about this is, again, just gives me hope about like, all right, go ahead okay. and green light season four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, like right. I'm ready. Yeah. And it's now that it's been introduced, though, that they can bring them back randomly. Yep. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure that they will be back randomly here and there. If we see it, I'm sure we'll tweet it out or let you guys know that it's there if you if you did miss it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we'll be doing a, a stream um, soon. So, again, hit subscribe on our YouTube page. And uh, you can yeah. watch us doing some some Fortniteing. Yep. I might just say that I'm streaming and actually have Riker holding the controller like off to the right. Honestly, if like, you're you know, if you're like if you've got the headset on and he has the controllers, we don't we're not going to see. We're just going to hear you. We wouldn't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we'll see. I, I think we we'll know if you tried to hide that. But then eventually, like in the middle of the match, you're like, oh, come on, Riker. You should have got that guy. <laughs> or no, even, I think I think what I think me being surprised at how good I'm doing, like, oh, whoa, no way. Like, that, You'll start being yeah. really good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like TJ said, keep an eye out for our stream on that. You can uh, be notified if you uh, subscribe to us over on Twitter whenever we go live. I'm not Twitter, uh, YouTube. And then finally, the last little thing uh, I want to bring up is the uh, Twitter account did an, another tease of the art book. So the art book that um, is now set to come out in March, right? I think it's sometime in March. March. It's March, um, yeah. And they teased another like handful of pages. Uh, again, looks so cool. Um, you know, a couple uh, character models of, you know, Robot and Battle Beast. And uh, we got to see like a page from like, okay, episode one. And there's a lot of quotes in there from Simon Rassiopa. You've got some from Nate Bellegarde and, you know, uh, you know, the whole team, Corey Walker, everybody in there. So can't wait to have that like coffee table art book type thing that we can pour over and have on the shelf. Yeah, any anytime we get any kind of behind the scenes material, whether it's a video that's posted or a book like that, mm-hmm. it's so exciting. Like I I think I enjoy getting to see like how the sausage is made with stuff, even as much as I like uh getting to actually watch the show. <laughs> Bill, that's a that's common a weird, expression. Don't make that's that a face. weird that's I have never this was the first You've time never I have heard ever that heard expression. How the sausage is how made how the sausage, sausage is made? made? Yeah. That's very <laughs> common. Bill. Bill, it's weird that you have not heard that. Thank you. You guys are that acting is, like this. That is unbelievably common. On this podcast, no one has ever fucking said anything about sausage. Ever. In the, Bill, in it the, is in such the, a however, common in, phrase. In the almost decade we've been doing this, and we uh, that's all we do is talk about how the sausage is made and how, like, we don't know how, oh, wow, we're so ignorant to the, how the sausage was made. You're welcome, is I think what you want me to say to you right now, that I brought a new phrase into your vocabulary. No, it's so common. That's so weird that you, you guys never are heard playing that a joke. You're this is the joke. You you all got together. No, I'm not going to fall for it. I don't believe we were it. so close, guys. We were so close to Bill thinking that that was actually a phrase. Man, <laughs> I, I I am actually paranoid about this. This is not the first time you guys have done this, Ryan and TJ. Yeah, maybe, but this isn't. This really isn't. That is a that is a phrase. Yeah, very common. You can Google it when I'm reading my emails. There you go. Uh, all right. Speaking of emails, let's jump into everyone's uh, uh, thoughts on episode four. TJ, you have the first one. Oh, do I? Like to take okay. it away. If I could find it, you kind of surprised me here. Oh, it's not like Feeling dead not air. like I sent a list of the order in which the emails would be read. I mean, why? Why would I do I that? I thought we were. I didn't know we were done with the news and stuff. <laughs> All right, this one comes from Brendan. What's up? First time contacting the crew, but I've been up, but I've appreciated your content and insights since the release of the animated series, as I've never read the comics and don't want to as to spoil the show. So Brendan asked a couple questions here, so we'll go we'll go one by one here. Uh, what do you guys think? Is it better to wait for the show to play out or read the comics now? wait if you're this far in you might as well wait and be as surprised as i have possible. i disagree i have a i have a thought on that ryan you can go no ahead. if think... you want to know how the sausage is made watch the show 
or, or read, read the, the comic, comic book. Yes. And then, and then you yeah. know, you'll get there, Bill. You, soon it will sound like you've <laughs> known that phrase forever. Um, <laughs> no, it's, I mean, they're doing such a good job. A good example, and this isn't a spoiler, Brendan, um, is the queen of uh, Aquarius, uh, forgot her name, Aquaria? I don't remember. Aquaria, probably. Nope. Yeah, the queen of Atlantis. That right. Um, that whole scene where it's like, oh no, we outdid that barbaric ritual, that barbaric custom. Um, like that is self-referencing the comic. Yeah, I feel like you're getting so much more enjoyment by reading the comic first and then getting to experience those changes uh, in the show. And um, yeah, man. And you know, you're gonna have a wait. You're gonna have what six, seven more years, maybe, hopefully. You know, of of animated series. Um, Finish the comic. Finish the comic. You finish it in a month, you know, even if you're taking your time. And then you can read it again every year before the new season comes out. And, you you know, and we'll talk about it more today. Well, you won't hear this because I'm going to say stop listening when we're done with your email. Um, but we'll talk about it more today about how, like, I've been looking back at this section of the comic book. Um, and man, like getting to re... I mean, we talk about it all the time because we've been doing the show forever re-experiencing certain sections of invincible I'm like oh i forgot about that that was so good you're gonna get to do that again and again with the mm. comic and so again bill with says so bill says you don't Wait. need to read the comic ryan no is no, saying, no i don't say you don't need to read the comic i say that if you <laughs> i'm not gotten this far okay yeah <laughs> ryan is saying to read the comic i'm going right in the middle the show does such a perfect job the show is made for people who have read the comic and it is made for people who have not mm -hmm. read the comic. I mean, Ryan's example as like for one to um, about Aquaria also like, for example, when seance dog showed up, I mean, yeah. people didn't, people that didn't read the comic are just continuing to watch a random episode of invincible, but we were screaming at the TV because we knew what that meant. We knew what it we meant. Knew we didn't know it was, what was coming. coming. We, we, I, I thought that that, yeah, we did. No, until the knock, when Sam's, until the knock happens is what I mean. Like normally it's when Mark's at home. So like, they're still changing oh, yeah, things right, for right. comic readers. Right. But there's a lot of things that they do that like, honestly, the majority of the show really does follow the comic very well. Yeah. So it's really made for, for, for both. So it's honestly up to you. Like I, I would not have to, I wouldn't say you have to read the comic or that you shouldn't read the comic. It it's it the show is built very very well for readers and non readers alike. What if what if he reads what he's watched so far? Because you'll still get new things because things are out of order. So that would be a a, a happy medium, right? If you don't want to spoil like the end and and two yeah, seasons I mean, from now, just every, read up every two seasons. Read a compendium. That's good. I like that. Can we agree on that? That's okay. <clears throat> I I see both sides. I see how it is like you get the surprise while you're watching the show. I think because the comic is out there and has existed and because the show's blowing up in the way that it is, I would almost say read the comic if just for the fact that there are people who are posting things on Twitter and posting things online of like this moment from near the like the amount of times I and I won't say anything spoilery here, but the amount of times I've been like furious looking at a youtube thumbnail that is talking about the last issue of the comic yeah. that people are just experiencing the end of the story that way because they accidentally scrolled past something in the album yeah how many like, times you like how Invincible? many times here's this thing and it's like yeah it it's so infuriating to me that that is how that story could get spoiled for somebody so yeah. i say just for your own like ability to take control of when you experience the story Good point read the comic because it's amazing like we've said it point. the show is enhancing a ton of stuff that like obviously we're all fans of the comic who have read it and are delighted by the way the show is adapting everything and still i would say even more engaged than like my parents who are watching it who have no reference about what's going to happen or anything so yeah i i can see both sides but i say i say go for it and read the whole comic it's so rare too that there are comics out there that are 144 issues that are a complete story that you can start and finish at your own pace and enjoy. And it's a full thing. Like, yeah, that's a, and a then special you can read thing. Wolfman <laughs> and Tech Jacket <laughs> and Invincible Universe right. and yeah. Guarding the Globe. And what if over the next several years of the animated series happening, spinoffs and tie-ins tie come out <laughs> and you can experience those too. Yeah. 
jump in there. Yep. Brendan is friggin' like getting some main topics going here. Uh, he then asks, why doesn't Cecil or Rudy utilize the Maulers to clone Mark? They could have an army of Viltrumites or even clone the immortal. So, Brendan, we're going to tiptoe mm. around spoilers. But I think the easy answer right now is um, I'm seeing that with the increase of popularity in Invincible, I'm seeing posts like this every now and then online. Like, well, why doesn't this and why doesn't that? And it's going to happen. And I don't know. There's an answer. And I think that that's all that people need to know is there's an answer to that question. Mm, I mean, I think there's an answer that's I think there's an answer that's not spoilery at all about anything from the comics. I mean, in these first two seasons, we see how much the humans in this world are afraid of Mark and Nolan. Like, yeah, it would be great if there's more of them, if they're good and if they're helpful. And there's the jury's kind of out in terms of how Cecil feels right now about Mark mm -hmm. and who he is. And like, does he want more of those variables? I mean, yeah, if they're, if he could find a way to like make sure he's mentally controlling them in some way, but there's no guarantee that he's going to have absolute control over him. So I, I think it's as simple as yeah. like, he's dangerous. So like, it would be a dangerous thing to do. Yeah. Not to mention, I mean, the Maulers have only ever cloned themselves. That's what I was going to say. And, and, and obviously Rudy. they're different. And then humans. So like, who's just, we don't know the intricacies of, them. yeah, who, who, Viltrumites or, or any other like immortal, like immortal was a human being and then saw some sort of whatever that was that gave him the ability. So who knows if they can clone the immortal as a human, but would they still have his powers? Yeah. There's lots of play around. Man, maybe we'll get something like that. I don't know. Yeah. That's something that the, that the show could 100% delve into that would surprise us. In a similar as way, readers. they've talked about duplicates, powers and ability and mindset. They yeah. could throw something like that out there. Yeah. And that's yeah. another thing too, like to talk about the, the last question, like, duplicate i've always i've always had that question like reading the comic and i've completed <laughs> one through 144 and i was like i wouldn't want to be her because like does she feel all the pain and blah 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 and we got that answer so yeah i feel like we could get some some more cloning answers what's next brendan's final answer or final question is uh how come rudy doesn't have rex's abilities and then he says thanks guys for your content and passion and happy Thanksgiving to you and your loved ones. Heart emoji, Brendan. Read the Spoilers. comics. You'll find out. Yeah. You'll mm -hmm. find no out. comment. <laughs> but that's it. And <laughs> honestly, that's it. Brendan, you and anyone else still listening, this is your hard line. That's why I put that email yeah. first. This is it. No turning back. If you're still listening yeah. from this point on, we're starting to delve into some uh, comic book spoilers here. So... Of there all of the ways that you could experience the story of Invincible, I think the four of us can agree <laughs> it shouldn't be us talking about it. <laughs> That's right. For your first time. You know what I mean? I disagree. <laughs> I think a different it. way. And then if I can back. go back in time. <laughs> if I, if, Bill, if you can go back in time, you would listen to yourself spoil Invincible for you. <laughs> exactly. I'm not even and be joking. wrong. You would. And be wrong about like, you know, 80% of it because I misremember. Yes. And then when I go and read it, I'm like, wait a minute. Like, I, I, what I, really I said Space Racer was going to be a bigger deal here because he wouldn't shut up about Space Racer. I, I got so, to the end. I was waiting for him to be ripped in half and then reform in two halves. Well, Bill, what were you talking about? Yeah. So actually, I'm going to amend my statement for Brandon here because we're stoked that you found us and we're stoked that you're listening uh, and that you're becoming a part of the invincible community but whether you choose to read the comic or whether you choose to not read the comic and watch the show either way you should probably stop listening here because you don't want the show or the comic to be spoiled for you and we're going to be going very heavily into spoilers um so i'm going to amend that statement and say go read the comic so that you can come back yeah, and so you can and hang out hang out more like right now that's true right because now. then you are we'll not experiencing invincible community until you watched all of the show Right. Yeah. You know what? We can do some time travel. Ready? All right. Brendan, go read and then come back. Ready? Send us an email when you're done. There you go. There you go. Here, ready? All right. Brendan, wasn't that sick, dude? We just <laughs> you just time traveled like now you... however long it took you to read it, and we're here now. And now you can You listen. can answer your own question about Rex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Crazy, right? <laughs> 
All right. Next email. We've got a few of these guys. Oh, it's me. Okay. One down. One down. And my first one right here. Hey, guys. Just wanted to start off and express how awesome I think your platform is. Growing up, I was a huge Walking Dead comic reader. During that time, I always saw promotion for the Invincible comic, but never picked it up. And man, do I regret waiting so long. After watching season one, I was immediately hooked and dove right into the comics, reading them all in about a month. There has never been a story that has made me feel so happy, sad, angry, excited, and cry in such a great fucking way like Invincible has. It has become my favorite piece of fiction I've ever experienced. Once season two premiered, I was immediately hooked again, started a reread of the comics, and was looking for more ways to indulge into the Invincible world, and that's where I found your podcast. Being able to listen to your recaps and just be a part of a community that is so passionate and in love with this universe has been so fun to experience this past month. I've also been going back and listening to your old podcasts, and it's been hilarious to listen to your predictions to what the show was going to be. Man Oh Man was episode four amazing. From the Thraxa showdown to seeing Debbie's character development and everything else has been so fucking cool. One pet peeve I have with the episode is that one of my favorite aspects of the comic is that Mark must push himself and work out to make his powers grow even more. The scene where Mark is chased before the big battle and exhausted was something that I was looking forward to seeing adapted because I love that aspect that superheroes do not automatically have their max power. Over time, they must continue to strive for improvement, which was one of my favorite elements of Mark's character development in the comics. So not having that chase scene was a little upsetting for me. I hope we get a scene somewhere else in the show that I could start to de- uh, that can start to develop that. I also wish Mark and Nolan's fight scene had some more gore, but that fact that the, but the fact that the show even exists, let alone how great the adaptation and story have been, is something I will never take for granted and love so much. My question to you all, without giving up too many spoilers for non-comic readers, yeah, we're past that part, which, yeah, which parts or elements of the comic are you most looking forward to seeing adapted in the rest of this series? Keep doing what you're doing, and I'm thrilled to be a part of this Invincible podcast community for years to come. Much love, Brady. So, I mean, first, like the, the, the comments on the like pushing yourself in the chase. Yes, that is one of my favorite moments from the Thraxa fight is him with Andressa and Oliver and looking back and him apologizing to Andressa saying, I'm sorry, I'm not fast enough. They're, he's going to catch us. And then Nolan saving them in the nick of time. Mm-hmm. My guess is it's not for sheer wanting to or quality or anything like that. It's probably just timing and pacing and you know getting because at that point andressa in in the show andressa stays in the cave you know like in the comic like he they go to the cave um mark punches um lucan and then escapes which isn't very intimidating of lucan to just be like get your head in the game come on gotta like Mm -hmm. he just and then he chases him and then nolan shows up and then i think mark flies her back to the caves and then he goes back way. to Nolan and then yeah. Nolan's upset. It's just a lot of like yeah. juggling yeah. and dressa. So I think they it's... opted to just be like, this scene ends here. Take out Luke in here. Keep this scene contained in this one place instead of mm-hmm. the back and forth. So well cutting to other things in the comics. Like, um, so yeah, you still get, you still get that feeling like that that feeling in the comic book was when he was pushing Mark's head in and like Mark was helpless. Like there was nothing he could do in that scenario. And I was actually scared. I'm like, Oh wow, this is a threat. So you got that feeling. It was just different. And who's to say they're not going to use that, like that thing flying and being like, Oh no, we're not going to make it later on in the comic or in the show. They could. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that does like, there are moments in the comic that are not exactly that, but that are similar to that, that I think that they Mm -hmm. could be maybe even like holding back on, on sort of using that moment to make it a little bit more dramatic and impactful in a future fight. Yeah. They do a thing with flying with a character that is very similar. Probably everybody's favorite character. Mm -hmm. Her name is Tara. Um, Where it's it's pretty identical to that, but it's not he couldn't fly fast enough. It's that he couldn't fly as fast as he could. Yeah. Otherwise, like, yeah. you know, he'd cause yeah. some damage. Um, but yeah. yeah. As for scenes that you guys are excited to see, TJ, do you have one? Ex- scenes that I'm excited to see for season two? No. Or uh, the second half? No, just animated in this just show in general. In general. 
Uh, I'm still going to do the same one. Uh, hopefully we get it in the second half of season two, but the Rex Bloden and uh, the Blizzard League, yeah. that's the one I've been really anticipating to see. So what about you guys? It's going to be nuts. I'll Con- say... Conquest is going to fuck people up. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it's, yeah. It's, that's a no-brainer. Yeah, yeah. There's the big stuff like Conquest, obviously. I'll say, I, I mean, the title card is teasing the blue suit. I'm excited for the blue suit. One thing I'll say, <laughs> just like a design choice, I could do without the the like blue pants part of the blue suit. If it was just like all black oh. with just the blue logo, oh, I don't, I, the the blue pants look has always been a little weird to me and just design wise. But I know that mm. that's also changing like a very iconic kind of part of the costume and, and his evolution. So that has never once bothered me ever in my whole life. And now <laughs> I feel what? like I have to, I never I really thought about, about it, it that much until, until somebody pointed out that they don't really like the blue suit that much. And I looked at it for, I was like, it does kind of look like he's wearing blue. So pants, that's, sort of. that's, that's Mohawk Mark suit. Yeah. Basically yeah. Mohawk marks goes like all the way down. Like I think to like, to like mid thigh, mid thigh is, is the blue yeah. and that's it. And yeah. then it's just a big eye. Yeah. I like yeah. that though. But again, I'm just excited to see how they do the blue suit yeah. and how they kind of introduce all of that. So, I um man, oh, in preparation for this like predictions episode, I've been looking through like the next few, you know, issues and everything coming up. Blue suit, Mark. Anything, anything blue suit is going to be incredible. However, the first thing that I think of is like late Angstrom stuff and Mohawk Mark stuff, and like when we get into some timey wimey stuff and we get into yeah. like other dimension stuff where it's like we go back to that and it's like what is different about that place like anytime it starts to like like okay we always have fun with the you know the this universe of invincible but now when we get to be like oh you know those characters in this universe there's just like a quick cutaway to like what they're like we got to see some of it in episode two like you know the the post credit mm-hmm, scene mm-hmm. but now imagine like a whole episode like that where it's like Conquest is who? Like Monster Girl is what? Like what is going on? Like I can't wait for stuff like that. This was this was the thought that I had, and you're reminding me of it now. What if that mark that we saw in episode two becomes Mohawk Mark? What oh, if that man. world is Mohawk Mark, and we get more scenes with him showing yeah. that world evolving before he eventually comes? No, back Wyatt, in stop. The Invincible no, War. <laughs> redact it. <laughs> redacted <laughs> again i don't think that's happening i'm just saying that would yeah. be a cool you say that thing. every time and then it <laughs> fucking happens <laughs> i think uh, i've only gotten I'm, like I'm, two things right this half of the season so why far, it's okay? done why it's done now so i'm excited uh moments like that change so dinosaurs is, is such a like a cliche villain even when he's introduced he's he like comes in Bill, at an inopportune his, time for for mark and it's just like blue suit yeah and it's and it, yeah and it's but it's after but it's after uh dinosaurs is after conquest isn't he he's before he's after invincible war he's before conquest i'm almost positive i'll double check you keep he's, going it goes it goes invincible dinosaurus war, dinosaurus conquest, no right no definitely not Con- no, conquest, mark is, conquest is first oh yeah, you're right mark you're right wearing, conquest is first. yeah mark is wearing the cast and stuff yeah. so i can't wait for people to think that he's just stupid and then when he breaks mark out of the moon thing and fights thrag and oh just my God. completely like <laughs> yeah. would die he would die for mark like like the, oh my god i'm i'm so excited for people to experience <laughs> the character growth in these characters and have it really change if you think that invincible right now as a tv show is like kind of changing what you think a superhero thing can be just fucking wait like I can't wait for that stuff yeah. to happen. I'm gonna but you add gotta put an, the legwork legwork in. I'm gonna add an honorable mention. Just all things kid Omni Man. Yes. Like yeah, man. That yeah. right there. Yeah, man. Give me like, speaking so of many suits. Cool things. Speaking of suits, I can't wait to get to the black and red kid Omni Man suit. Yeah. That's maybe yeah. one of the best like superhero costumes that I feel like yeah. doesn't get enough love because it's fairly short lived in, in the comic mm-hmm. and he moves on to other designs. Such a cool yeah design yep. love it uh bill do you have an email for us i do uh let me see i have to make sure that it's the right one yeah yours All right. are out of order i think i it's i got it because you put two on yep. one of them so um hi guys oh my gosh this season has been my dream it's better than season one 
how is this only episode four? I can tell this is Kirkman fine tuning so much of this already p- perfect story. Marketing mad instead of crying really took me for a loop. And while I always cry at Nolan saying he shouldn't care for these people slash how could he feel better? How could this feel better than not caring? I was crying more at it animated. Yeah, it hit it hit hard. Um, I'm stoked we saw Nolan's journey to Thraxa. Was he going to kill himself in the black hole? Question mark. Yeah, that's yeah. Wyatt. Uh, an arc of Donald realizing he's an android. Wow. I wonder what other lore we are in for. That's that's great. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Sadly, my first quote unquote issue uh, has come with this episode, though. General Krieg. Right. Yep. Is that how he says it? Yep. Oh, that's another one. I never thought that would be one that we got wrong. I know. Ever. Uh, General Krieg sounds too cool. I've always read his voice as Dr. Doofenshmitz or Robbie Rotten. I'm only half joking. Do you guys know who who either one of those people are? I do not. No. I can picture Doofenshmitz. I know who that character is, and I think I know what they sound like. But I'm not even gonna. Who is it? I'm not gonna guess because I might be wrong. So I'm not gonna say. Is it from like? Is it from uh, like Powerpuff Girls or something? I don't think so. But that sounds. We're gonna that, have to that was that. a guess as well. Um, love the podcast and y'all are the best. Still cooing over baby Oliver, uh, Leah, and then she put her uh, her Twitter ha- handle Faye Kitty fourteen. Thanks, Leah. Thank you. Yeah, I think it and was. I, agree. I think it was Maybe more Oliver like a was more like a yeah, you know, talking like this kind of thing. You know, I think they General Krieg. No way. He's uh, he's, he's got... from he's from Phineas and Ferb. That's what I thought. It's the platypus. He's got the very pointy chin. No, not the, the platypus. I can one. I can see I can see why he would oh, he would feel that. They would yeah, feel that, that guy, way, the orange hair. Oh yeah, yeah. I think that that is exactly the tone that they went with Doc Seismic, which. And uh, totally. King Lizard as well, right? They went with that tone with with shoot first, ask questions later, which, like very animated. Which did you watch the new Rockstars thing? I didn't grow up with GI Joe, but it's like a one for I one. Did, yeah, it's one mm-hmm. for one. Him and uh, King Lizard yeah. and um, Supreme Lizard. Uh, yeah, yeah, are like one yeah. for one uh, GI Joe characters, and they look and sound yeah. exactly like them. Oh, that makes it so good. That makes it so much yep. better. Because the voice yeah. is really ridiculous, but then when you know what it's mm. mocking, even the headquarters, like the GI Joe, like yeah, yeah, uh, I know. I I was surprised that like I hadn't made that connection between right the Lizard League and Cobra Commanders. Like, duh, it's a we're not, well, we're not GI Joe fans, but <laughs> I, I mean, know, but we yeah. know Kirkman is, so it's like I feel like I yeah. should have sort of made that connection, but yeah. All right, Wyatt, are you next? I have got one. All right, so this says, hello, Ryan, Bill, the sweet one, and my prediction partner. Not calling it PP. I'm just going to say the prediction partner. (laughs) Uh, Wow, just wow. This is my favorite episode this season so far. The music montages were great, and the Viltrumite on Viltrumite action during the Thraxa throwdown 2023 was top notch. I would like to relay my love for something that needs its attention, the voice work on this show and how great it is all around. Yes, Stephen Young, Sandra Oh, and J.K. Simmons are taking it to the next level of awesomeness. And the secondary cast like Walton Goggins, Jason Matsukis, and Ben Schwartz, just to name a few, are also bringing their A game. But I'm talking about the voice acting talent that you know their voices, but not their faces or names right away. For example, did you know Gray Griffin, a.k.a. Gray Delise, voices five characters in the show? Shrinking Ray, Olga, Monster Girls Amanda, Eve's mom, and Thula. She was also Azula from Avatar and Evelyn from the recent CG yeah, dude, He-Man is, Netflix show, which I love. She's awesome. I didn't put that together that she was Thula as well. Same. I don't know why I never even really thought was about one who was I voicing know. Thula. Because she's great. But immediately as they said that, I was like, of course. It's like, it's so Azula. Yes. Like, it's such a, yep. that same kind of energy. Uh, then there's friend... Tatiscore, I yeah. think is how you pronounce his last name, who voice voices two characters we all love to hate, except for Bill, Kill Cannon, and Eve's dad. Then he delivered the first character, the Thraxen Captain, to talk to Omni-Man during the most recent episode with a performance that made Omni-Man stay on Thraxa. Uh, I was introduced to Fred from his Hulk performance in Avengers Earth Mightiest Heroes, which is the greatest Avengers cartoon ever. It is. Uh, 
Then there's Kevin Michael Richards, Clancy Brown, Phil Lamar, just to name a few multi-talented, multi-character voice actors who are bringing this show to life just like others they've worked on. Thank you all. Is there any tertiary character that you enjoy from this or last season um, that could use some love and attention? Thank you, Invincible Podcast Pals. Love, Travis, a.k.a. Thadis. P.S. Ask Kirkman to finish Super Dinosaur. (laughs) Yeah, great. Uh, so what do you guys um, think? Characters. Do you have any any characters? I feel like the yep. show does such a good job of like spotlighting so many. I mean, I'll say in this first half of season two, Tatiana Maslany yes. is so good, and I never once really felt like, oh, that's Tatiana Maslany. Like even as Telia, but like that shift from her to Aquaria or the Queen from Atlantis, like don't sound anything alike to me really like it's it's not like she's doing crazy voices anytime but it, it's different enough that it never took me out of it like some of them do like when clancy brown showed back up again as as krieg i was like oh clancy brown that's cool <laughs> and that's all i was thinking about for those first few seconds of watching him but like i uh tatiana maslani just did a great job yeah she's fantastic we we all love avatar and like we know azula's voice so well that there are definitely a few times i think at least for me that like you'll hear someone talk and it's like oh that's 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 great at least mm-hmm. you know uh and then there are times like you're saying like of course it's Thula. i don't know why it didn't click when it happened um but then there's little ones like eve's mom and it's like oh yeah wow you're right that is that is also great she does such a good job and it, it's always great to hear her pop up um one that uh that she follows the podcast which is one of those things that's like yeah that's cool insane to me in my life that don't make sense (laughs) the uh one that like uh came to mind that we haven't mentioned yet and small role but mark hamill does a great job you know what i mean like that's art like that's what art sounds like really does i you know i've said it before like reading some some issues to prep for predictions i read the scene with mark you know talking to art about having girl problems and i was hearing mark hamill's voice for art and it's like ah this is good like this is what Mm -hmm. he sounds like that happened to me for the first time with uh with it was a a a drawing that ryan otley posted recently of alan and omni man and i caught myself going i just heard like jk simmons and seth rogan for the first time like actually reading it's really cool that's what i was about to say is like i i when seth rogan was announced I'm like, we talked about that and I was, I, I think I said, or probably all of us said like, I don't know if I can ever just have Seth Rogen's voice be Alan when I'm reading it. Yeah. And it, it took over. Yeah. 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 Uh, Michael, is it Michael Dorn? Oh Ooh, yeah. Dorn. yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, did I get the first name yeah. right? Is it Michael yeah. Dorn? Yeah. Well, I just know him as Worf. Like I remember when he got cast and we heard about it, we were like, this is going to be fucking great. But I just, I never knew what his voice sounded like and, and hearing him bring battle beast to life. Like it's just a whole extra layer, you know, of complex. He, he's, he almost seems more complex to me. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but yeah, that sounds like that. more sophisticated than I would. Yeah. Have like he's more oh, complex. Yeah. He's not just like very like, mm-hmm. I want to fight. Like I, I just read him maybe as like a syncopated, like, you know, I don't know. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I just want more Damien. Bring Damien back. I'm ready. I'm ready for more Bulletproof. I feel like we got so little of him. Yeah. I want to hear some more of him. Jay did such a good Mm -hmm. job. Um, All right. So (laughs) that brings us to uh, some predictions. We're going to talk a little bit about what we think is coming from uh, part two of season two. Um, Some hot takes here. I can't wait to hear them. So what I'm going to do is if you get allow me, I'm just going to read some things that happen within the next like that haven't happened yet in the comic that are around the same window because obviously we're jumping Mm -hmm. around a bit like the reanimation happened like way later even after thraxa like it's all over the place um so here are some things that have yet to happen but do happen around this time in the comics and then we'll talk about whether or not we think these will happen and in which order so Mark arrives back home from Thraxa. Eve and the Africa stuff happens. You know, well, sorry. I just wrote down his notes. I didn't know how long, how much I should like go into it. So Mark arrives home with Oliver, talks to Debbie about it. Like I saw dad there take on, you know, watching Oliver. 
you know, the, the, you know, Cecil talks to Mark, yells at him for what he did. He's going to help with, with Oliver and so on. Um, Amber's upset about Mark going away to, uh, Thraxa, uh, for so long. Um, but she's not sure she wants to, you know, you know, be a, she's not sure if she likes the deal anymore of what, of what dating a superhero is going to be. So to make it up to her and to help build the relationship, he takes her to Africa where Eve is. They have the conversation about, you know, she's not like us, not like superheroes. They have to go off and save a, <laughs> a, a, a village from a stampede or something. Um, Amber gets a little upset about that too, but ultimately while they're in Africa, Mark gets the call. Angstrom have, is back. He's at the house. Oliver's there. Tax Debbie, that whole issue happens. Um, Mark is stranded in another dimension after killing Angstrom. Um, Mark receives help from future versions of the Guardians. Um, he shows up back in our dimension after they save him, after Eve professes her love to him. Up to this point, that really wasn't a thing. It was just kind of like they were just strictly friends. Um, Mark talks to Art Rosenbaum about, hey, I've got these two girls. Eve's always kind of been a friend, but I mean, come on, why wouldn't I like her? Um, also, my dad said something about books. You know, he learns about the books, says that they're ways to stop Viltrumites. Uh, then the Lizard League attacks. Then the Sequids attack. The teams get split up. Some go to space to help the Sequids, whatever. Uh, some go to help or stop the Lizard League. Those two things happen. Anissa shows up. Um, that fight happens. Then issue 50 happens with, you know, all the, um, with Doc Seismic coming back, trapping all the heroes. Mark, you know, uh, Darkwing coming out, you know, Mark fighting off Cecil, that whole thing with uh, what Cecil did. Then you've got Kid Omni Man on the and the Maulers. You know, Brendan, like, you better not still be listening. I swear, you better. So he read it already. Listen. He's he's back. He's back he, because he read that's it. That's right. That's right. Yeah, okay, he read okay. it already. We're yeah. in the future now, Wyatt. Right. <laughs> yeah, <we're in> the <laughs> so, like, I chose to stop there. There's no way we really go past any of those things. You know, what I mean, like, I tiptoed around mm-hmm. some things, like, because, like. The Angstrom attack, because people are, so we've got some emails from listeners, got three emails coming up and we'll insert those in a little bit here, but all three of them are throwing out different predictions between the, the issue 50 stuff with Cecil, the Angstrom attack, like Mark and Oliver, like, uh, like there are so many different big events. What does this, what does season two end with? Should we start with what it ends with and then kind of back up? I like that. I like that. I I already I've been predicting the same thing forever, but why you can go first. I think that it ends with Mark and Cecil having a falling out. I think it's going to end with I think it will end with the like the blue suit officially being put on and I think that in that final episode will be like the confrontation between Mark and, and Cecil. And is a lot of that because of the logo treatment? And it's like the season Mostly, three is like, black and blue, which means we have to do the Cecil fight in the finale. Yeah, that's what it feels because like. Otherwise, it feels like it should be Angstrom, right? Yeah. Guys, things can be out of order here. Don't 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 forget that. Like, the, I I think that they could throw stuff out of order. I really do. You mean like fight Angstrom, or you mean fight Cecil, then fight Angstrom, and then fight Angstrom? Oh my gosh! No. Fighting yeah, Angstrom in the blue suit. Yeah. That's what he's saying. Uh, I but I think the Angstrom fight is one of the things that leads to the blue suit. Yeah, you're right. The story he has a plot it, line that, that, that creates. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. So he's not the blue suit invincible yet when he fights Angstrom. Okay, so we have four episodes left. What episode do you think that happens in? Him getting stranded, episode seven, and then episode eight would be would be issue fifty. He comes back. If they if they do the time travel thing, I think I think that's important for Mark professing like for starting to think about Eve that way. I think that it's if anything with Eve, I, we're jumping all over the place. If anything with Eve and those feelings happening, it's going to barely be this season. I think that they're not even close to that right now, um, where him and Eve well, Ryan, are, and where Eve is something... mentally. I mean, we're we're not talking about Amber. Amber is still very That's much a I mean. thing, and they are like 
good right well, now. They're not fighting. They are. I think sure. Is Mark went away. It only takes one episode. Mark went away, but she. Episode. Yeah, you know, for sure. But that's one whole episode. We only have four left. And there's, look, you said it yourself, Bill. How much do we need to pack into this? The last four episodes in order to get to Cecil. Do you forget how uh, much they put into episode fucking two? Right, but that was a or staple three? episode. That it was built that way. You know what I mean? I, I think that that's why they did that episode that way. I don't think they're gonna do it. So, that I don't way think they're gonna. I don't think in one episode. I do not think they're going season. to slow down. I think episode four is a prime example of a moment that they needed to slow down, spend time on Thraxa. But I think that they could. So let me fit more. let me back it up. Now let's go to episode five. Mark is coming back from Thraxa. How long do you guys think it's been? Months. It needs to be. I it needs to be almost I a hope, year because Eve's going to be in a different goes place. Against, Debbie, Amber. Mm-hmm. I know that this goes against everything that we're saying, but I hope that we don't see him until the end of that'd be cool episode five. I because it should take him forever to get back to Earth, and I want we didn't get any Guardians in the in episode four. I want it to be mostly Guardians. I want it to be Rex and Lizard League, and I want it to be. Uh, maybe we get some amber growth there where he's she's like, you know what? Like, I thought I was OK with this, but I'm not OK with this. He's been gone for too long and I miss him. But we didn't get any of that, like in episode four. I don't know. We'll see. But I, I, I hope we don't see Mark until the end. Maybe the after credits, he arrives. He talks to Debbie. Debbie breaks down. He talks to Amber. Amber's like, we need to talk. I don't, I don't know. But what if we get a year's of worth of story in one episode? Like, what if what if we get like several time jumps, like month time jumps? I, th- I think the you know I think the tough thing is again. Remember this this I don't think episode four and five were intended to have a gap between them. Um, I think that like you got the you've got the Donald stuff, you know, mm-hmm. you know Aunt Eve. I think that we're gonna come back and it's gonna be. I think it's going to be Mark's come back and we will be witnessing what happened since they've been gone. I think it's very easy to think, oh yeah, like I like your idea, TJ. I think that's creative and that'd be cool. But I think the Cecil coming over to the the, the speaker to Donald or whatever, the earpiece saying, Cecil, we've got a situation or Donald, we have a situation. Where are you? Could just be a, a wake up because think about it. That's when the music cuts out. You hear the dr- blood dripping. That could just be Donald being like, like he's not moving. He's not answering Cecil that it's not about the situation. They have a situation every five minutes. It's more about yep. what mm-hmm. Donald's headspace space, headspace is. So I think we might just nope. get it's lizard league. You're wrong. It's lizard league. <laughs> lizard league. DJ, we're going to get I, it. Gonna I get never it. I like the <laughs> yeah, idea I... of the, it also being during the sequids. And I don't think we'll get sequids and lizard league. Well, Mark is gone. I think they'll stay. Are we going to get like seven? Or, yeah. Yeah. You know, six yeah. even. I think Sequids and Lizard League are episode six. Yeah. I think I think episode five is Mark is coming back. It's him introducing Oliver to Debbie. It's kind of the fallout from Cecil. what just happened. And then I think the ne- the episode six could be Lizard League and the Sequids. Sequids. The my the problem I have with trying to predict where it's going to end, and the reason I'm second guessing myself already and feeling like that can't be how it ends. Recently, Kirkman did like an interview where he was talking about how episode four and eight are both like insane episodes. We've now seen four. We know why he said it was insane. He he in the article, I can't remember the exact words, but he talks about how eight is crazier than four. And I just mm-hmm. don't know how you do that unless it's conquest. Like no, and, I, so, and I know it's not no, conquest, but Angstrom like, could do that. Angstrom could do that. Angstrom could definitely uh, yeah. do that. Angstrom Cecil, and Cecil. The issue 50, I can't see doing that. I think it could. they could make it awesome. I mean, think of the yeah. Reanimen showing up and everything, the White Room stuff. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. That could be amazing. And maybe it is I think now, you sure. do that back to back. If you do those in I, one I, episode, it's like half right. Angstrom. Oh, my God. If he, he goes comes back what if, and what has if, to deal with Cecil stuff. like What if it's five, he comes back. Six, it's Sequid's Lizard League. Seven, it's issue 50 stuff. I'm sorry. Ang- it's Angstrom. And then he wakes, uh, you know, he's beat up. So he goes to the Pentagon right away and they get into a fight. Instead of the fight about Doc Seismic showing up, it's because of Angstrom. Hmm. Yeah. No, I don't know why. Hmm. I have. Okay. All right. All right. Listen. It's got to be Doc Seismic. Hear this. Yeah. Hear this. Okay. Uh, The first half of the season. Whilst. Not not Doc Seismic. Yeah. Doc Seismic? Yeah. And Darkwing. Yeah. Okay. I think they could. 
ramp up how because it's all it's all about like oh as they're fighting you know while this fight's happening on on thraxa on earth it's kind of mellow and tone and somber or whatever whatever the scene is but it's like a tonal shift what if what if episode eight has or seven has both lizard league stuff happening on earth well, so so that happening, and then also Angstrom attacking. What if that's the same episode? So like this is this is happening to Mark. Well, this is happening to Wow. This is like imagine that feeling of like oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Like and then and then I you thought because episode I thought like because you have Doc Seismic showing up, even though I agree with TJ, like Doc Seismic, because they've introduced him in the first half of season two, bringing him back as like a real threat and actually stopping all the heroes like he does in issue 48 and 49 is cool. But like, what if that is just, what if he has Darkwing or the Reanimant show up to help at the Lizard thing, League thing or the, the Sekwit thing to kind of combine those storylines just to get it, just to fit it in there? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hmm. They could there's do. That's lot, what I'm saying. Though. They I mean, could do a lot. There's, those don't have to be like their own episodes. Yeah. If you, like for example, like, um, if you wherever the Lizard League lands, do we get Multi Paul the next episode? You know what mm. I mean? We saw Multi Paul. Yeah. Okay. But his whole question. character is what happens during the Lizard League fight with duplicate yeah they could do that i have i, faith I mean that they could doesn't stuff come up in. until later i mean after no, the lizard league I, stuff. I i thought it was the episode after lizard league or the the issue after lizard league because he thinks that duplicate is dead okay i have a yeah. question for you what do you guys because think about issue 50 has the the teleporting scene damn 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 yeah. right with the with the okay that's awesome. Like mm-hmm. if that were to if that all that shit were to happen in in episode 8, I would actually be okay with that. So let's say for example, for instance, they put the Lizard Lead Rexplode stuff happening in episode 7 with Angstrom stuff happening. It ends with the future them coming. You think Mark stranded it ends with them coming and then episode 8 is him coming back. What can they also put with issue 50 to make it that much more like if if they're not just going to have issue 50 be its own episode what else are they going to put in episode eight if issue 50 is in episode eight so <clears throat> what you're saying is forget the sequence fight maybe that's six or five or whatever lizard that's, league yeah. and angstrom are happening in episode seven Same time and it ends mm-hmm. with mark stranded or maybe he just got back or whatever and rex has just been shot in the head boom end that episode which is crazy, crazy. Penultimate. Yeah, which does penultimate. feel like a penultimate. Yeah. Then eight starts. Yeah. Rex is alive. Mark is just got back from the future or like, you know, the, the other dimension. D- the desert, yeah. And he, why is he mad at Cecil? Like there has to be a rift between him and Cecil. Like there has to be something that pushes them over the edge. I think like, I think Mark. Cecil could. I think Mark. Going to he, wouldn't, it, wouldn't it be, wouldn't it, you said. Um, Darkwing, Doc Seismic, Darkwing Da Sinclair, up and the Reanimator. So you're working with Dark, you're working with Darkwing, and you're working with the Reanimator. And is there something else? And Da Sinclair, yeah. And and he also says like, stay away from my brother. So that's another thing is that like, shit. I feel like when when Mark and Cecil have their falling out, Oliver can't still be little baby boy. He needs Guys, to be if... like trying to start. He needs to be showing that he has powers at that point. I think. I think I'm gonna he's gonna it, grow though, quick. He's a, I'm gonna say he's it. a baby. He's a baby with Angstrom. How quickly? I, know. I mean, he that's can't... what I mean is that no. like he can be a, a toddler. Between that in the comic, so I don't know how issue exactly fifty happens they'll... in season three. I think that's how you it kick off season to. three. But the the yeah, only thing that we're I getting hung it. up that's, on that's the only reason because then there's time we're comes. getting hung up on this is the blue suit yeah. is the is the title card. Yeah, that's the only reason why we're getting hung up on this. And that's what I'm saying. Otherwise, we wouldn't even be. Yeah, we talked ourselves out of it, right? Issue 50, beginning of season three. It has to be. Let's do it. Bookmark this in case it does happen <laughs> so that you can tell us about how we were so sure of it. Really quick before we move on. Shout out to <laughs> Bill. You you brought up the panel that's the two-page spread with Mark flying across and Cecil's doing the crap, crap, crap mm-hmm. as he's like teleporting through. Uh, shout out to Mara, who listens to the podcast, who runs the Invincible Out of Context. 
she said she thinks that's the episode seven thing that had to be done differently in animation than the comic which was the thing we speculated for a while, which our running theory up until watching these first four episodes was that it was going to be the whole seance dog, like reusing panels joke, which I feel like we got our seance dog joke this season. Like, I don't know if they're going to keep bringing seance dog back later in the season. So I could definitely see that being something that they have to change that in some way. I think a listener letter flying across the panel has another theory about that thing too, which I think those will help spark some more thoughts on this so yeah i tj go ahead one other thing before we not to keep drumming this up about the blue suit thing the only thing that makes me think that it would go to blue suit at the end of the season is again each season of any show should have an over overarching story um and we talked about like oh the trailer for this season like i love the misdirection of mark going bad it's not misdirection it's not misdirection he does go bad. And we know that like, as soon as we saw the title card, where it's like, oh, it's not misdirection. It's this whole season is about, I don't want to be bad. I don't want to be like my dad. I don't want to be like my dad. I feel like it has to end with him going bad. And that, but, that doesn't necessarily have to but be the that blue could suit. It be, could just be him killing Angstrom. That's exactly it. So it's him. This whole season is about him getting to that point. Whereas next season, where it actually is the blue and black, black and blue, is him taking it on and doing it. I agree that yeah. I feel like I want him to don it, but him, him, it's issue 51. 51 is the beginning of season three, not 50. Yeah. He doesn't have the blue yeah. suit in 50. Yeah. But anyways, Bill, can you start us off with your next email? I certainly can. Let's see here. I think this says two. All right. Hi, Invincible Podcast. I write with my thoughts and doodle for episode 204. First of all, how dare you, Ryan? We love the Maulers. Sorry, had to be said. I'm, I'm. Is that the the end credits or post credits? Yes, it was me talking yeah, about how okay. have they, how they cut away to Thraxa. The A plot, B plot. Yeah, right. I also kind of agree with that sentiment. Your sentiment, Ryan. Not how dare you. Um, uh, actually, it was you that said that. Bill. I was going to say you. you're disagreeing with you yourself now. from a you week ago. You literally <laughs> said, Bill. Direct quote from you was: "People are going to write in it, write in, and be mad at you." Ryan. He's doing this because of you <laughs> about the Maulers. Wow. Is he? I'm He's also so and then you, dis- thing to and then you disagree with him. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm also realizing that uh, this is actually an episode four email. So we're going to get a little episode four here. Sorry. Okay. Uh, sorry, I had to be said. Uh, I love the voice performance on everyone on Thraxa. J.K. Simmons and Stephen Young killed the emotion in their lines. Uh, Rhea Seahorn also nailed her monologue as Andressa, explaining to Mark her relationship with Nolan. It quickly reminds the audience that the Thraxans are not just alien bugs, but people with complex emotions. Uh, of course, I loved the King Mahler storyline. Um, it was tons of fun straight from the comics, despite anything Ryan might think. However, it seems inconsistent with a line from a Mauler in season one, specifically in episode 107, just after the Maulers copy Rudy's mind into Rex's clothes, a Mauler explains, we had, we had to make it seamless. Otherwise one of us knows he's the clone and that never ends well. This line seems to imply that King Mauler's storyline had happened before. Or at least that King Mahler should have predicted Clone Mahler's betrayal. My headcanon is that King Mahler is not actually one of this dimension's Mahlers, but one of those Angstrom brought to this dimension to fight Mark. Thoughts? I like that as a headcanon. But that is a really cool... Yeah. It's a a fun headcanon. That's really cool. Yeah, it's just one of those things. It's like, yeah, they know they're not supposed to, you know, make it so they don't know, but... Again, this is just for fun, and maybe he just thought, you know, it's going to be different this time, and it's not. I, yeah, I yeah. know that I'm not supposed to snack after 8 p.m., but guess what? I'm yeah. probably going to tonight also. You know, things are the way they are good. for a good fucking reason. Yep. <laughs> mm. Ryan, uh, aren't last... all of these episode four emails? No, sorry. This this one is, but then the next two are actually more about predictions. Oh, okay. Lastly, I swear we have seen the woman Eve saved from drowning at the bridge before. I think she was a bystander in season one, but I can't seem to find her. Mm-hmm. Does anyone else think she looks familiar? Maybe it's just me. They reuse. Unfortunately, they uh, reuse character models. Yeah, they, yeah. We, they've talked about um, that before. Thanks and keep up the good work, uh, Louis Cortez. And there's a doodle. That's right, right? Which I just texted to you guys. 
Let me know when you get it. <laughs> oh, that's good. Is that good? The Mahlers? Oh, that's, that's, that's really, really good. good. That's yeah. really good. Bourguignon is exquisite, you jackass. <laughs> <laughs> TJ, what's Bourguignon? Uh, it's a wine, actually. <laughs> Very close. Yeah. That's close. <laughs> um, that's awesome. That's really, really well done. Yes, thank you, man. <laughs> Appreciate it. Your your that's your great. doodles every episode was, was awesome. I love seeing so those. Good. Collarbone King. All right. I've got one that's uh, a little bit more about predictions. This one comes from Jake War- Jake Swartzy. Okay. Hey, guys. I loved episode four. I love how they made Mark more mad at Nolan than in the comics. And it was actually really good to see him whoop up on Thula a bit. But this email is a prediction for the next half of the season. I don't know if you guys are going to make a prediction episode like after season one. Yep, we're doing that right now. Um, but I would just like to tell you guys my predictions and hopefully this won't make Bill mad. I would like to start off by uh, that that I correctly predicted that we were going to see Nolan and Thraxa at the end of episode three. So getting that correct is giving me a confidence boost. I'll start with a little bit of Amber. I think they're starting to slowly show how Amber doesn't really like that Mark is gone all the time and him being gone for a month on Thraxa won't help. I can't imagine when Mark gets I can't imagine when Mark gets back from Thraxa, Amber will be a little upset at Mark that he was gone for so long on such short notice, and she will deliver the line. What if I'm not happy with the deal anymore? I then think episode five will deal with the Sequid fight on the Martian ship and the Lizard League fight at home. They already teased the Sequid ship in episode two, and they're making Rex Mm -hmm. seem a little more douchey, so him getting shot in the head will start Rex's redemption arc. I think Mark being in space again will make Amber more mad, and she will meet Gary type a Gary type character and start pushing Amber away from Mark. I think episode six will deal with Mark and Amber fighting again. So that makes Mark take Amber out to see Eve at her place in the woods. This will then lead to the Angstrom fight in the phone call. Episode six will end with Mark stranded in the dimension. So the, mm. he's saying the 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 mm. Sequids and Lizard League in the first one. The second episode, I mean, you know what I mean, is going to be the, the Angstrom fight. Episode seven starts with Mark being rescued by the old guardians and Eve confessing her love for Mark. Mark deals with his feelings for Amber and Eve, really showing that he didn't truly have feelings to start until older Eve told him. Then episode seven ends with the Doc Seismic underground fight and all the superheroes trapped. The episode will cut to black with Mark and every other superhero trapped in those bubbles. Then episode eight starts with Darkwing and the Reanimator coming to the rescue and Mark confronting Cecil and issue 50 will happen, being the main focus of the finale. I think it will be a much longer and brutal fight than in the comic. I think Mark may kiss Eve after that fight. And I think the title card will happen at the end of the episode, showing the full black and blue screen. And the episode will end with Mark flying through the sky in his black and blue suit. Sorry, this email is a bit long, but I've been thinking about this for a while. And I think this could be the case for the second half. I'm excited to hear you guys' thoughts on the second half. And sorry, Bill, if you're mad at me. Hmm. it's very well laid out it really yeah. is it's I very, love very it. thought so out. packed man if that were the case yeah. like that's a, again like you know sequids and and uh lizard league and marketing back and all of her stuff and eve's headspace and where she's at all in the first episode back you know is a lot it's a it's a whole lot and then immediately jumping into you know the second half of the second episode back and it's the angstrom fight and it's like th- it'd be insane it's it's too much you know i thought um go ahead so the Amber thing, I mean, Mark, correct me or remind me, Mark knew how long it was going to take to get to Thraxa when he showed up on the ship and said, look up, I have to go away for a while. Didn't she say like how long? And he told her and she said, go do what you got to do. He, he, I thought he told her how long it was, was going to be. No, given. he just said, I have to no, go help was, people. Yeah. I'm sorry. And she said, don't apologize. Go help. I yeah. thought he said like how long she said how long you're going to be gone and he's like a while or something like that. I, I thought think so, she knew was, it was going to be a long time. There was a conversation between in the fo- the following episode between William, Eve, and Amber where Amber's like, yeah, that it's been a week. So it's been a and week. Like yeah. she like sounds like, yeah, you know, mm. a little concerned. Well, I think I think the I think it would be weird if he came back and she was just like, I'm mad about how long you've been gone. Yeah, but it, well, at the same time, we got do in the comic. We either. got she's just we got a upset. piece. Yeah. We got a piece uh, at the tail end of their story of the episode three. Last time we saw them was the text message where he sent it and it wasn't received yeah. of him saying, I love you. So I think that it's going to be more 
like that and like where is this going and you know i don't know so it's, he said i love you. something up he didn't he didn't text it he said i love you yeah but it, like, and the call failed yeah. yeah yeah and the call fell yeah i almost i, don't, I, I was don't... thinking about this too because like i i i love that the the email kind of lays out the path of the story being centered around like mark and amber's relationship and when it when eve comes more into it because i think that will be kind of like a through line i almost wonder because they're making amber I feel like a much more mature character and a much more like understanding character. TJ, do you have another ghost in your house? TJ, are you? <laughs> yeah, I, honestly, I was, dude. The, I was the, waiting the, for Spider-Man to drop down from your ceiling. <laughs> no, my, uh, I have my Christmas tree up and my, it's like just making. Oh, weird. it's very cool. Well, it's noise. a beautiful tree. Uh, I, oh, I'm you. wondering if, if they will, instead of doing the storyline of Amber, just like not liking how much he's away. If instead the wedge that is driven between the two of them will be that Mark is starting to feel like, Hey, maybe I do need to be more like a Viltrumite. Maybe I do need to like, maybe it's okay to kill people sometimes when you have to kill people. Jeez. And she starts seeing like, you know, that's, that's not the person that I thought that you were. And maybe that's what kind of splits them apart. Um, I don't know. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I, all of the stuff that he laid, that they laid out in the email though, I feel like is, is, more likely than anything that I said. Like I it was think, more convincing to me than my own theories. I think um, that is like the most optimistic, like as far as like the yeah. amount of stuff we'll get. I'm I'm still putting it back that like Angstrom happens at the end and we get like the slow burn of like, we have so much more of Debbie to see the books, like Eve and everything like that. I think we're going to see a lot more of that that would take up that time. Like all those little things and seeing like the Maulers, like we're not done with the Maulers. And part of me feels, and this is going to throw everything out the window. Why did they show so much Maulers in the first half of the season? If we're not going to see him at all in the second half, what's the next thing that happens to the Maulers? It's Kid Omni-Man killing him. Yeah. 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 Or at least Oliver. He doesn't go by Kid Omni-Man time, but he's starting to learn his powers. Yeah. Like they could age up Oliver. And instead of him being like a two year old, mm -hmm. like when he comes back, he could yeah. be a, a, a preteen or something after a month and a half, like on the trip yeah. back to earth and just get all that out of the way. If they made Oliver older faster, I would be completely fine with that because it's lore that they can change because it's kind of already established. Like how <laughs> fast does he age? Pretty damn he quick. Lo he looks like, older I mean, on Thraxa than he does in yeah. on Thraxa in the comics on Thraxa in the comics. Like he looks more like really he's little. At the age I would say now he's like in the comic that he two. was when Debbie got him. Yeah, I here's, agree. Here's I what think I'll in, say. even in the Here. even in the comic, he was mm -hmm. he was aging at a normal um, human rate, but then sped up later. But in yeah. the show, he like Mark said, the timeline doesn't match up. He's already older yeah. than he should be. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. It makes sense that he's he ages faster while he's younger and then it slows while he gets older. That's I just want what I just want Debbie with a baby. I don't want Debbie yeah. with, you know, a teenager. Like I want to see her have scenes with taking care of this baby that she like yeah. her, her. He'll still be a baby. I mean, yeah. even if it's for a day, like yeah. whatever. Oh, yeah, he'll. Yeah. Otherwise, he would be a part of the fight. Here's why You're I right. will. I, I, I'm not. I'm not happy with that. I'm not happy with that because it's it throws like I agree. Angstrom, I feel like needs to be at the end. He needs to be like the big finale fucking thing. It's a fun bit, like him going through dimensions, like that's. Hey, he could 15 minutes you like it's not it's not a big thing and not to mention i thought angstrom would be more prominent in even though he's not in the comic i feel like he would have been made more prominent to then be made to be the big bad villain but he really i don't know he's he's not You're, so i guess i wouldn't be surprised if he was put right in the middle that's of the point of this what if what if we do we it does end with the death of angstrom and it kind of bookends his story in the season, mm -hmm. which I like, and that it it's perfect. And then the after credit scene is Angstrom's dead body, and then we just see the portal. The portal, yeah, mm -hmm. starts opening and it cuts. T yeah. Because of where I think season three goes, and we get full black suit stuff, and the end of season three being probably the Invincible War and all that stuff, and then the arrival yeah. of Conquest, you have to tease that he's still alive, because then right. you have that exactly. threat of season yeah. three and you have mark dealing with this the fact that he killed someone but the viewers know he didn't 
and that that's why that one's going to be Mohawk out Park, there. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Mm. And mm. Count, to counterpoint what you said, Bill, about how it is just kind of like, you know, it could be a thing that's just 15 minutes, the whole angstrom, like going through portals. Um, another thing that wasn't like a big sequence was Omni-Man versus the Guardians in the very beginning. You know what I mean? Like I could see them taking angstrom and being like, we want to do a little more with him. We want to make this a fight. And he's pulling mm. in all kinds of creatures or other things from different dimensions to make it like a much bigger thing. I mean, like Mark's I could definitely and it does it it fits with what TJ was saying about the season needing to have like an arc that starts somewhere and ends somewhere. And with this all being about like, am I becoming my father? Yeah. Having Mark kneeling over somebody, pummeling them with blood splashing, kind of like that's a very iconic no image from the refusing. end of season one that mm -hmm. they could very much like kind of do a call back to and have that be that feels like it should be yeah. the end of season two and like, whether or not it makes sense for other stuff and what's coming like it's what no one said like he he and mark saying to him like i don't kill i'm not killing mm -hmm. someone he refused he held back and didn't kill hula yeah mm -hmm. well he said stop fighting like you're on earth like you need to fight like you're gonna and then he's he I like I mean, how dude. there's like how Mark almost takes everything black and white. Like, oh, I have to listen to my dad. I'm going to I'm going to fight this guy like I like he's about to kill me, mm -hmm. but then like goes too far. So it's really Mark learning about the gray area, yeah. not being just human or just Viltrumite, but being Mark. TJ, you're muted. TJ, you're muted. TJ, you're, you're so muted oh, that. Yeah, <laughs> it's uh it's what the season is. It's it's yeah. it's, uh, it's I don't want to be like my dad. I don't want to be like my dad in the first episode. That's all he talks about. And then and then in the halfway point, it's you have to be like your dad or you're going to fucking die. Yeah. So he starts being like his dad. And yeah, he has that hesitant moment after afterwards. And it results in him almost dying and being, you know, left on Thraxa with a hole in his stomach. Um, but it's leading to that point. It's it's one of those yeah. talking points. It's leading us to the blue suit. That kind of so makes good. me think, too, that it could end with the dialogue between him and Oliver of Oliver being like, did you ever think that dad was right? Oh, and Mark being like, no, no, that yeah. fits. But I know with his, too mind far. Space of, too far. Uh, his head space of wearing the black and blue because the black know, and blue is him accepting that, you know what? I am kind of him, you know, like. I'm just glad people more talented than me get to make <laughs> these decisions because it's too much. It's too much to balance. Yeah. Uh, and more on those decisions in our chat with Simon. Resi open. Wyatt, can you read our final email? I have our final email. It says, hi, Invincible Podcast crew. Uh, my God, how perfect were these first four episodes? I assume you'll be debating predictions for the second half of the season soon and figured I'd chime in with mine. Seeing the pace of the first four episodes has me thinking we are in for a treat during the second half of the season, and it could end further into the comics than we think. My prediction is, drum roll, please, Conquest. That's right. We didn't give him a drum roll. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, Ryan can edit one in really quick. Yeah. Here, yeah. Do, do it now, Ryan. <laughs> Conquest. That's right. I think, very similar to how Negan was introduced on a cliffhanger in the Walking Dead TV series, we will get a brief taste of Conquest right at the end of Episode 8. Just like we had to wait to see who Negan kills, Kirkman will make us wait for the fight we all want to see until season three. Imagine the Invincible War has just concluded. A shadow appears over Mark. We hear Conquest's voice. The I'm here to confirm your progress. If you oppose me, I will kill you speech happens. And we see we see Conquest. Mark replies similar to the comic. They fly at each other in slow motion. Action lines, Ryan Otley art matched to the most specific detail. And we fade to black as we hear the sounds of the fight happening. Now, just like with The Walking Dead, non-comic fans will rush to com to bookstores or read spoiler-filled articles trying to figure out who Conquest is. Because this is class this is a classic TV trope that Kirkman has done before, I think it's possible. Plus, no way season four doesn't get greenlit if this happens. The buzz will be insane. Bonus prediction, after credit scene, the sounds of the fight continue. We see Cecil scrambling in the Pentagon. The Conquest fight is happen happening uh on screen in a blur behind him he is running to the white room door flies open are they ready the invincible reanimen are revealed love you all and keep up the good work mike barrett mike just sent us an email from the future mike this is how <laughs> season three ends <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what i thought two. i was gonna be like where 
think about season three, it's right? Too because much. No fucking way in hell in four episodes. In four episodes? No way. Like, I, like no way. how many pizzas it's, it's will you send him, Bill? How many pizzas will you send him if that's right? Oh, all of if that's if that's season every single pizza that there is in every in every alternate dimension i like how mikey's I, mike says like reveal the alternate you know universe invincible reanimate we we haven't done the invincible war that happens after mark kills angstrom which hasn't happened yeah. Yeah, like we're two that's two we have to get, too that's, that's the yeah. end of I season also, three i also think of think of it in terms of rexplode as i think of everything in life uh you can't have the Lizard League and the Invincible War in the same season. It's too much. However, TJ, you act like the Lizard League is this huge fucking thing. <laughs> do you even <laughs> remember it? You probably don't even remember it. Yes, you I don't do. Even one, thing, one thing, one ha- thing, well, a couple things happened, but <laughs> a lot <laughs> happens, Bill. <laughs> Bill, you're thinking about the one thing that, like, no, I'm thinking about the thing that I like the most. Two specific things that happen in it. Three things, if you count a hand. Yeah, but no, that's just it. the entire Guardians die. Oh my God, shut up. So one thing I will give not Mike a big deal. Though, that's not a big deal. One thing I will give Mike though is how cool it'd be if we do get a post credit scene or something along those lines, or we see on the prison ship or something thrag on the, on the, th- the throne sending conquest and Anissa or talking to both of them and sending Anissa to earth. So we know the viewer knows that Anissa is showing up next season. You know, I like that. Yeah. I, I, like I that. think that Jeffrey Dean Morgan is playing thrag or conquest and no, 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 Thrag. And I think that, to your point, we'll get... I thought we would have already met Thrag at this point. I thought we were going to get a we're, little bit more. We're on more. track. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Will we see... Alan? Alan? <laughs> <laughs> we're just going to see Alan. him in the pod. And then that Thetis is going to be like, I plugged it back in. Don't worry. He's fine. <laughs> like, we still have to see Alan stuff in the second half. Yeah. There's so yeah. much. There's there's still too much. Like, do we? We do. We yeah. Do. do we need to see it in season? Yes, in we season do. Two? Within season two, I think more Can important than the Lizard League Alan stuff. Again. I think we need to see Alan. How much of Alan we see? What's interesting is, knows, but yeah. How about this one? Do we see Nolan again this season? That's what I was kind of alluding to. I don't think we need to. I think it, again. I think it could be a. Uh, Season one finale did a montage at the end. I think it could be something like that. You guys, honestly, I feel like you forget how much they pack into these episodes. Like we think of these big moments as like entire episode spanning things that take all this time, but they don't. I I, I don't know. Like Lizard League is going to be half an episode. It's going to be a thing that happens in 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 a half an episode. It, well, other things are happening yeah. in that same yeah. half. If they put yeah. if they put Angstrom and Lizard League together yeah. to make it like a crazy fucking episode, yeah, I think the Lizard right. League thing will be as big of a part of an episode as the Atlantis stuff was. What's funny is the only two yeah. scenes that- I agree with that. Why yeah. TJ hates no, you I for think it? That, that was you <laughs> literally <laughs> just said the like opposite of that, Bill. Yeah, yeah, it was Bill like literally episode. said the opposite of that. Atlantis wasn't a big thing. You that said Bill said He's, i think they're gonna match it up to something big like the angstrom fight and then why it goes no i think they're gonna line, line it up with something like an atlantis and you're like i absolutely agree that's because he said it <laughs> <laughs> he's always right so i'm gonna mm-hmm. put all my eggs in the wyatt basket 60 <laughs> percent of the time i'm right every time <laughs> yeah nice all right well we'll have plenty more to get to to predict again the only thing we've seen from the second half of the season is rexplode We've seen two scenes, Rex talking to Invincible and Rex being attacked by a member of the Lizard League, Iguana. Uh, which which scene happens first, TJ? That changes things too. Um, Iguana? Iguana would happen first. I'm not going to go down that path, but we're going to have... If all of our listeners aren't more confused and more frustrated after listening to this episode like I am, I have no idea where it's going to go now. Like, so so many exciting. ideas so yeah. many ideas were presented that I literally, I do not know. Anything's possible. Which is, which is, just goes to like, say like, Simon and all the other writers, like the job they have to make this all cohesive and working together to tell that whole story, like, 
is very exciting and daunting. And uh, I can't wait. I can't wait to see it. I think it has to be, to answer your question, Ryan, it's got to be him talking to Mark first. So then it wouldn't happen when is good. well, he's gone. Yeah. Hmm. Um, all right. So that does it for predictions. We'll, um, we'll have more to say about that. Maybe we'll get, do you guys think we'll get a, a trailer? Uh, that was, it, I was going to ask, not really looking back episode. So before the first, before the first of January, will we get any more yeah. footage of any kind of season two? Yes. Yeah. I'm I think we're no. going to get a tech jacket episode. <laughs> I think it'll we're be Christmas get Day. Oh, yeah. TJ. I think, I think that... It'll be Christmas Day. I think that... You're going to make John Stephen work on a... Work on Christmas. <laughs> You're going to make the Invincible Twitter account admins work on Christmas. Yeah. I, Chris, Invincible never sleeps. Yeah. So... I'm Now that we're back in the realm of, like, we just know a year, like we were at the beginning of yeah. this year, where we're like, we know it's this year or this part of this early year. early 2024 I'm, yeah we know early 2024 that's all we've heard so far i'm firmly like receding back into my pessimist mode where i'm just right. like okay so then Our, i assume like late april as <laughs> yeah, far right? as like I'm still early i guess because it's the first half like until until i see something otherwise that that is like from the invincible account i just don't want to get my hopes up yeah well We'll save those predictions for our looking back episode where we'll listen back to last year's predictions. Oh God. And make new predictions for the following year. We had some juicy predictions uh, going into 2023 and in Invincible's 20th anniversary. Um, but we're not done with this episode yet. We've got one more segment. Um, we now that we're back to our regularly scheduled episodes, we have an issue spotlight. And it was my turn. So I'm going to talk for a quick minute about an issue. So if you're new to the show or if you don't remember, we started a new uh, <laughs> uh, segment that we do at the end of every episode um, where one of us brings an issue to the table to discuss a random issue that we just want to talk about. In lieu of doing a whole nother reread where we go through every issue, every episode over and over again, we just wanted to take snippets of, you know, favorite moments or, you know, something and talk about it. So for mine... I decided to... I have a prediction. Oh, okay. Go ahead. <laughs> You've been talking a lot about Kid Omni-Man, and I think that it's the Mauler episode or issue. <laughs> Interesting, because that's, that's so that's... weird, because I just opened up to it, and it's not that... <laughs> it's that page right there. I own that page. Really weird too. <laughs> I am going to guess... We've talked about this before, how like our first round of issue spotlights, we all picked the little... The more niche ones, not yeah. the conquest, not the big mm -hmm. ones. So I'm going to say that it's the one that we know that Ryan likes a lot and that it's the like Paris issue when Ooh. he takes Eve to Paris. Oh, TJ, do you have a guess? Oh yeah. With dropkick and uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think it's going to have something to culminate like in some way, the animated series of what we just, what we just saw. Um, not quite. So, because we're talking so much black and blue suit, I had to do a black and blue suit thing. So that's why that's why I've got this uh, hardcover out. Going through this, guys, I am so excited. My favorite issues of Invincible are probably going to be all in season three. Like Wyatt was saying, issue 54, starting with Paris uh, and it being all about King Immortal. Guys, are we going to get King, King Immortal in the animated series? What that? What is that going to be like? We have to. Like, we that's going to be insane. Um, obviously, all the Oliver stuff and everything like that. 59 is Powerplex, another one of my favorite issues. But no, today I am talking about issue 58. So nice. issue 58 is another favorite of mine. Um, this whole era, though, is just so good. Um, one thing that I talked a lot about during our breakdowns, specifically with like episode two and three, is I love when Invincible is just like jam packed with storylines and a lot of stuff going on because it's just, I just love the universe. I love the world. And this issue does it better than any other issue in the entire series. And I have a quote here from comicbook.com where Robert Kirkman talks about this issue because this issue is 16 panels. So this one does the complete 16 panel grid issue. What's six, what's that, what that means is that every page 
can be broken up into 16 panels. So for 16 example, different parts. 16 panels is, you know, all of the alternate oh, universe marks. So cool. It doesn't mean that they have to all be small boxes. You can combine the boxes as much as you want, but they still have to be able to be broken up into those 16. So yeah. comicbook.com, Robert Kirkman talks about it when he was talking about, I think it was the Whisperer War in um, Walking Dead, where that whole mm. arc used the 16 panel grid. And he says, uh, yeah, I love 16 panel grids. Uh, my irredeemable Ant-Man series at Marvel was based on a 16 panel grid. And I've done random issues of other series like Invincible in this style before. It's a lot of extra work for everyone involved, least of all me. But I think it's a really cool <laughs> and it is a great way to do a manageably dense issue. I think it started with The Dark Knight Returns, but I'm sure that's just probably the most well-known example. For those of you who don't know or haven't noticed, it doesn't mean each page has 16 panels, but each page is designed on the grid and that larger panels are made up by combining the multiple panels on the grid into larger panels. So what is exciting about this issue is I'm just going to go down and tell you everything that's in this issue in just like rapid fire. It starts off and it's Mark and Oliver um, and they go to the hot dog stand where Mark wants yep. to take him to where him and his dad went. Um, so we get some like brother, you know, scenes together. Then we get Eve leaving Stronghold Penitentiary. She's working on something. We don't know what With she's working phone. on. Yeah. Then we get uh, the Guardians of the Globe arguing over what their new team name is going to be because they're no longer the Guardians of the Globe after issue 50 happened. So Rex is like being Rex about it. And they're arguing about like, why do we even need a name? Rudy's working on fixing Amanda because she's struggling with, you know, aging um, backwards. And he said that he's working on something and he's got, he made a breakthrough. And then we've got Immortal and Duplicate house hunting. And she drops that, you know, well, where are the kids going to go? And he's like, kids, we're four pages in. <laughs> Mark and Eve go on a superhero date. Um, we got the new Aquarius who was previously Lethen that we ha haven't seen mm -hmm. in like 40 issues. And he's just sitting there and it does the repeated mm -hmm. panels and he's just like bored out of his mind. Then we've got a good chunk of pages, three pages where Mark and Eve uh, are on their way to a date and they're like, oh, you know what? I guess this will be our date. There's Kill Cannon attacking the thing. And they joke about how, well, he's kind of my nemesis. And Mark's like, your nemesis sucks. And you get some Kill Cannon action Respect there. the cannon. Thank you, I Yes. <laughs> then we've got uh, the scene with Shapesmith and Art Rosenbaum designing his costume. And Shapesmith is just like, oh, okay, great. Uh, and you're not going to pay me, are you? You know, that whole bit. Mm -hmm. uh, then there's Black Samson and Darkwing, where Darkwing is now kind of dealing with the fact that everybody viewed him as a villain. And he's struggling with living with that. And Samson is kind of like reassuring him that like, hey, that is the way I see it is until you walk a mile in someone's shoes and kind of dealing with that whole thing. Uh, Mark and Eve, you know, talk about Invincible Inc. She reveals to Mark that this is what I've been working on. You know, you're not working for Cecil anymore. I'm working with the, you know, with different with Stronghold and other places that they're going to call you directly with this cell phone. And so you'll go right to where the problem is. We don't need Cecil. Uh, then we've got Oliver working with his tutor, April, and she's talking to him about how like, pretty soon you're gonna be teaching me stuff. Like you're kind of at the point where I'm not gonna be able to teach you much longer um, and showing his growth. Uh, 15, Mark catches another orb that has been watching him and it disintegrates in his arms. Then the next page we find you know, Russ Livingston sitting in his apartment and he says, Soon. Thank you guys. <laughs> then we've got Rudy and Amanda uh, for a couple pages and he's teaching her how to use the belt. She's trying it on for the first time. She transforms, she goes back and she feels that it's different. And there's this moment of like, they have finally fixed this, they've cracked this and they're happy. Whoops. Um, and then, you know, Mark shows up and he's like, hey, I tried catching another one of those orbs, but it disintegrated when it blew up. Um, you know, I don't know what the deal is. And Rudy's like, hey, man, whatever it is, it's probably something that, you know, is so advanced and dot, 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 cliffhanger. You turn the page, all the different alternate versions of Mark, all 16 of them. 
turn the page again and it's the only full page and it's, you know, Angstrom Levy standing there saying, well, it's a start. So it is just Mm -hmm. packed. Like it's just, there's so much stuff in that. And it feels like one of those issues where, you know, Robert Kirkman does such a good job of introducing all these storylines and characters. And there's like, think of how many characters I just named off. And like, this has forward progress on so many of them. This is like one of those issues where you feel like Robert Kirkman was like, all right, I need to, I need to touch every table, you know, which is like a, a, a waiting mm-hmm. term, you know, when you're waiting tables, like you need to, we need to talk to everybody, like check in with everyone, see what everybody's doing and move the ball on all these different storylines. And it just feels great. And it's so satisfying to have those moments where you can just kind of like check in with everyone. And so that's okay. why it's one of my favorite issues. I that's feel like the one issue. that you, the one that you picked before had a similar vibe too. I remember saying that as you were talking about it, that it had just like tons of different little moments. I don't remember either. I want to say it was like there was a funeral. I think it was at maybe after the Lizard League stuff. Oh, but it was. Like it was Rex's funeral. Of, yeah, I think it was, and it was one that had like tons of yeah. little movements forward for a bunch of different plot lines. I can't believe they have all just of that what? stuff. We just talked about all these different plot lines and how there's too much to fit into the show. And you just listed a bunch of things that we didn't even talk about. And they introduced Kahor in season one. That's not even from the comics, but they got to bring it back at some point. There's too many things. I just don't know. It, like I said, yeah, are we ever going to see Titan again? We need to balance all of that. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. But yeah, but back, to, but back to the issue. I guess that's just, that's one of the things that I love most about Invincible is that, is the depth, is is just how much there is and how much I care about every single one of those storylines. We get some of those that are like, like I said, with Rudy and Amanda, like this is like, this feels like a victory, like something that we've been working on for so long has been solved. But then you get little things like Russ sitting there saying soon. And it's like, Oh shit. You know, like it, I don't know. It's what I loved most about Invincible. So I think, I think that's what makes those types of storylines or the fact that there are so many of those different storylines is what makes Invincible like such a fun, like love letter to superhero stories. You know what Mm -hmm. I mean? Like it does feel like you get a little bit of every kind of comic book superhero story that you would want because there's so many different plot lines that you know that like, oh, if you really like this type of story, it's still happening. It's going to come back in a big way eventually. And you get issues like this where you get to see like, the the top down view of it all which mm-hmm. on its own doesn't work you know what i mean like it it doesn't work as like a there's no time to really sit with characters and have long development you know what i mean like I, would i have liked to have a much longer scene with you know oliver and you know uh his tutor or R- rudy and amanda like what if that wasn't just condensed into so much like yeah but for this one issue there was only one issue that did that in all of invincible you know what i mean and yeah, so yeah. for that reason it was really unique yeah, it reminds me of like different different things and shows and comics and books and and does that kind of thing. It's like a tales from mm-hmm. like it reminds me of like tales from Springfield, where it's like it's it's, it's all these different stories that are yeah. happening. Like you it's get like Mo and Wiggum, like like that one. Yeah, it's like an anthology episode. And and I think do you so Ryan? My question to you is: Do you think that we will get that format in an entire episode? Or do you think that they're going to take things and make it a little bit more cohesive? No, I think the most think... we'd get would be like episode three was, or even two, where it was like, I think all of those things that I just said are going to be the long, you know, through lines that happen throughout season three. We will see yeah. Russ in his apartment throughout season three, sitting there saying soon. We will see Rudy working on Amanda, which by the way, was teased on the poster for season two. So at some point in the second half of season two, he's probably going to start working on solving that. Yeah, um, definitely. But yeah, I think those are all different, you know, storylines. Oliver growing up, you know, Oliver working with his tutor, uh, the looming threat of Angstrom Levy. Like I just gave like the the bullet points for season three and all the other mm-hmm. things around it, including like power plaques and whatever, are all going to be the meat that actually you know fills that out. And then it's up, I don't know. I and then it's up to Simon all of them to figure out do how it. to split it up yeah Turn those i think that they episodes. could do it i think that i think that they would take just like how they play with like 
you know, how the, how, how the title card is like a part of the show and it's not always in the beginning and it's not always like, <sighs> it's not always like, Oh, and invincible. Like they changed it. I think that they could, I think we have a better throw an episode in there. That is, of, and I won't do this one for a while. If I, even if I do, but powerplex, the sec, the issue after that issue 59 is the only issue. Oh God, I love the fifties of invincible. It's perfect. Issue 59 is the only issue of invincible that is not, from Invincible's perspective at all. Like it's it's entirely yeah. in the villain's perspective. It's just mm -hmm. Powerplex, you know, and his reaction and trying to get Invincible's attention. And it's not until the end, you know, that he's actually talking to Invincible and that whole event happens. I think you it's have like a better chance we, of- It's like how we started the show with just Steve's perspective and then we're gonna cut back oh, to Steve's yeah. Oh my God, Steve. I think, <laughs> I think it's gonna be more like Alan. I think if anything, we get yeah. Powerplex doing the Invincible title, car title card or something and we go a half an episode and it's like, where is he? And it's, maybe it doesn't show just Powerplex, maybe it shows other Guardians or whatever, but you just don't see Invincible this whole episode until Powerplex finally gets him to show up. And it's like, this is my whole life. Where have you been? Like, look at what you yeah. did. And Mark's like, what? Like, what are you talking about? And like it being, you have to be so in that character's head to, yeah. Can't wait. I will say the way that issue ends, make a cool end credit scene or post credit scene for the end of season two. If it, if it all plays out kind of how we're guessing and all of that, if it is just like cut to another dimension and it's like, you start seeing a bunch of, multiple alternate oh marks God. that angstrom is collecting you mean end of season just three, that right? one you mean, just that no he means i mean the end of season he means, two he means end of season two yeah that this is about so if, if angstrom is mid before. is like yeah to to set up that three is gonna have the invincible war you know what i mean cool we're so wrong about all this we're so wrong. Just i so can't much. wait there's just too much <laughs> can't wait to see how wrong we are and we'll be back uh yeah. in uh you know a couple weeks maybe less to to with a fun interview with Simon Resiopa and then uh, we'll be kicking off the new year with our looking back at 2023 and predictions for 2024 episode. We've also got some other cool things in the works that we're going to be doing very soon. We might be able to tweet about it. So follow us over on Twitter um, because that's going to be a lot of fun. We'll be doing that soon. I uh, can't say more, but otherwise that does it for this episode. Unless you guys have anything else you want to bring Probably Fortnite streams yes. at, at some point soon as well. And then I'm mm -hmm. sure uh, more Let's Plays with me and Nicole playing through the Adam Eve game as well. That's right. So mm -hmm. keep an eye out for that. And otherwise, that does it. Thank you all for listening. And we'll see you around. Okay, bye. 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 What's that? I don't know why it's so funny that everyone is sick. Like, we're all dying. <laughs> I, I, I don't know why it's just... into us. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>